Hi everyone. So today I wanted to give an update on uh, gene therapy for neuromuscular diseases. And it's been a while since I've done that. Um, there's been a few reasons. Uh, one, uh, the COVID virus has um, kind of added a, an additional level of complication to things. So um, why don't I start off by first talking about how that's uh, impacted uh, clinical trials and clinical studies. So uh, what um, universities and hospitals that are doing clinical trials are doing is to kind of prioritize things. As a general rule, they aren't starting any new studies, and that's actually affected uh, things for uh, the particular type of muscular dystrophy that I have and that the foundation that I work for uh, does research on because we were about to start a new study uh, at 15 sites in, I think, eight or nine countries around the world. Uh, what happened is uh, only one site was up and running before everything shut down. So at the other sites, it's on hold. Uh, at the first site, uh, the you know schedules of when people are evaluated are being perturbed a little bit, uh, but uh, you know we think that everything is going to be okay. But for uh, clinical trials that are already going, as a general rule, they're uh, keeping on with them. You know, in a lot of cases, and this particularly applies to gene therapy, once you've treated a person, it's not like you can untreat them and halt the trial. You know, you've treated them, and if the protocol is that you have to do follow-up follow evaluations at certain points of time, then really that has to happen. And so um, that is happening. Uh, so uh, the Muscular Dystrophy Association uh, had a conference scheduled in Orlando in uh, late last month. Uh, it didn't happen. Uh, however, that was actually to my advantage because what they did is in the session on clinical trials, which, you know, they acknowledge was kind of the most time critical thing, what they decided to do was to do a virtual session that was webcast. And so a couple of my uh, coworkers had planned to attend the conference. Um, gave me the link to it, so I was actually able to listen in, uh, even though I wouldn't have if it had happened as planned. And there were um, a couple diseases for which new data was presented on that. Uh, one was spinal muscular atrophy, for which there's an approved drug, uh, but there were additional trials going on. Uh, now. Spinal muscular atrophy is kind of looks like a muscular dystrophy, but it turns out it actually is a problem with the nerves rather than the muscle cells. And the approved treatment is for children up to the age of two, which um, in practice usually uh, includes the most severe form of SMA, which has onset you know, very early in life. Now, why isn't it approved uh, beyond the age of two? Well, that's because at a certain point in a person's life, uh, what's called the blood-brain barrier develops, which basically uh, is there to keep pathogens from your bloodstream from getting into your central nervous system. And before age two, you can just give the uh, gene therapy, which is a virus uh, modified to carry the therapeutic gene into the bloodstream. Uh, beyond that age, you have to give it into the cerebrospinal fluid, kind of like a spinal tap. And there's been some concern that there might be some risks with that. So they've put uh, a portion of the, the trials 
I think depending on the dose on hold. But uh, there were reports from that, and you know, um, the, the concerns are all based on animal studies. So far, none of the people involved in the studies have had any ill effects and uh, seem to be benefiting, although maybe not as, quite as much as one would have hoped, but uh, I don't think they're, they've been using the highest dose that was planned on. Um, there's another um, new results on another muscular dystrophy uh, called X-linked uh, myotubular myopathy, which are uh, quite impressive. Um, there's not an, in, an approved drug for that yet, but um, these trial results are um, extremely promising. It's very rare. It also affects people, um, almost always male, because it's uh, on the X chromosome very early in life. Now, as far as um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and limb girdle muscular dystrophy, there's trials going on for both of those. Um, in Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there's a large trial which um, isn't expected to have results reported before uh, late in this year. Uh, most of the people in the trial um, have already been treated, so it's, uh, COVID isn't going to really delay things. In fact, I think all of the people in the, in the treatment group have been uh, treated. There were other people in the control group, which if the data looked promising, were going to be treated at the end of it. Um, they haven't all been treated yet, but um, they have enough uh, data for the uh, people who were treated with the um, therapy and the controls who were given a placebo that um, they can do the study. They're uh, continuing to gather the data. Now, on uh, limb girdle uh, muscular dystrophy, this is type 2E in the old nomenclature, or R4, uh, trying to remember this, in the new nomenclature, uh, beta sarcoglycan deficiency. Um, there were three people uh, who were treated in uh, with a certain dose of the um, gene uh, last year and were reported with positive results. Now, in a follow-up uh, trial, they're giving an, the next group of three people four times that dose. And the first group had about half the expression of the gene as healthy people would. So it's by thought by giving um, four times the dose, uh, you'll be able to have, you know, at least the uh, person, the level of expression that a healthy person would. It might not go quite linearly, so uh, giving twice as much might not quite be enough. Uh, in addition, uh, the people are all are often treated during childhood before they're fully grown. Uh, as they grow, the expression of the gene might kind of be diluted. Okay, so uh, what we know about the trial is that the uh, CEO of Sarepta spoke at a conference in January and said that uh, two of the three uh, people in, the next phase, in this phase of the trial had been uh, treated, and he expected that the third one would be treated within the next week, you know, after he was speaking in January. Then in late February, he said at the quarterly um, corporate conference call to uh, investors and stock analysts that, in fact, all three uh, patients had been treated. So the treatment phase is done. Uh, they forecast that uh, by uh, about April, they would have expression data on how much of the protein that had been missing before 
uh, was being made by the uh, recipients. And we're going to report that. And then about six months after that, they would have functional data, you know, how they were actually, how their muscles were actually working according to various standardized tests. Now, uh, okay, so it's now April. Um, what they said is we will um, report the results in April at an appropriate scientific conference. Well, obviously, there's not going to be an appropriate scientific conference that's going to happen, at least not in person, in April. So since we don't really know when the next you know, conference at which the uh, Sarepta would be presenting their expression data is actually going to happen, it, it may be a while, uh, it might be that um, they're going to present it on either a conference call or a webcast. Um, they haven't said anything. Um, I don't know anything. Uh, but, you know, I imagine that, you know, if they're probably um, analyzing the data right now from uh, muscle biopsies, and, you know, fingers crossed, hopefully it's going to be very promising. Everything in the first phase of the trial has been very promising. So um, hopefully um, that will happen soon. And, you know, once it does, I'll um, give another report. So anyway, hope you're all, you're all doing well. And um, things are happening, uh, you know, even though... We've kind of all been a little bit distracted by um, coronavirus, so um, keep the faith and um, uh, I'll talk to you again soon.